Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be giving you some of my most essential and top tips for progression in Enshrouded. Now this game is absolutely fantastic but there is a lot of nifty things that you can be doing along your way to make your progression much smoother in this game and I'm going to give you my top tips and tricks that I have learned so far. So the first thing is going to be on materials and material locations. As you will have probably found out in this game, a lot of the stuff you need to get, you actually have to craft, whether it be some of the very early doors stuff like charcoal here where you need wood logs and dirt, pretty self-explanatory trees and hitting the ground with a pickaxe gets you these items. Or maybe you've come over to the dried fur rack and you need salt and fur. Either way, these are going to be things that you can collect. Animal fur obviously coming from some of the animal mobs in the game, as well as some of the actual enemies, the bear looking ones, and salt you can mine up. Now one of the best places to go for the sort of early to mid game transition materials is this ancient spire right here, the Revel Wood Fast Travel. Now near this you have obviously got the Mark of Sameth, you can go to there and that is a mine. There's lots of areas for copper, for clay, for things like flintstone. And of course, when you do come into these spire areas as well, there is these vases and these kind of containers that you can break up and sometimes they will drop loot for you. This is particularly useful if you are going into a new area as well because it can drop some of the new materials for that progression tier. Now from this spire where you want to go, I usually head sort of west onto this coast or onto this cliff, I should say, right here. Obviously, I've got the advanced glider right now, but you'll still be able to make this even with the very first glider that you get into the game. Now, this is a great location. As you'll see straight away, you can get yourself some of these hazelnuts, which if you play in melee, that is a great addition to your loadout. And you'll also see here that you can find strawberries. These are actually really good for regen in the game. Now, if you just move around the side of the cliffs here, you'll see that there is a flame shrine literally right here next to the spire where you jump down. So you can go ahead and collect that if you haven't already grabbed that one. If you jump straight down in front of it, you have got Diadwin, which is a little village area of this kind of mid, early mid game tier. Uh, there is some boars around which drop good food if you want to kill them. They are quite tough if you are in early game gear though, so do be prepared to avoid them. But what you can do is you can head over to this part of the village here and as you can see there is some indigo plants there and also some flax which you can go ahead and grab up. These are going to be great for your progression. There is also a chest there and you will see that there is several materials lying around the world. So you'll be able to find forest beets just on the floor and if you have a look towards some of these mountains as well, some of the cliff edges, you'll see things like copper and clay. Now the reason I show this particular Revelwood fast travel spire is because this is the part of the game realistically where I had the most kind of hinder in progression when I was starting off and didn't really realise how the game's progression worked. A lot of the materials can be accessed by this so once you've made your way up here this unlocks a lot of easy access materials to gather. Another thing that people often want in this early to mid game stage of progression is amber that can be found on some of the rocks inside the shroud. You're looking for an orangey rock with a spider web type texture to it. If you mine into that with a pickaxe that is going to give you amber. Now the next thing we're going to talk about here is crafting everything you can when you unlock it. New production places seems obvious, but things like on the alchemist for example, crafting things like your bug dust. Until you craft this, you won't unlock goo and you will be needing goo for a lot of different things in the game. This took me far too long to realise until we actually just went through and crafted as much stuff as we could and realised once we unlocked bug dust, that then unlocked the crafting recipe for goo. So again, make sure you craft everything as you get it because otherwise it can slow down your progression. Another really important feature of the game is maxing out the comfort that you can for that point of your progression that you're at. Basically you want to make somewhere with a fireplace that gives you warmth and then put as much comfort items in that location as you can. Now as you can see here things like the bed, the table, the chairs, the dresser table, the lamps, the bench, uh, all of this bathroom type furniture as well as the heads on the wall and the rugs all provide some sort of comfort bonus. Now, earlier in the game, you can mainly get these from crafting through your crafting table or the workbench here. If you go onto this and scroll all the way down to comfort, you want to craft the highest level thing that you can from each of these categories. So you can see here plus two comfort, this one is plus one comfort, and this is just decorative. So out of the options, you would want to go for this table where possible. Same for each of these categories, only one thing from each category does count towards it, although you may want multiple for aesthetic reasons. When you get a little bit further into the game, you can actually go ahead and go to the carpenter and he will have some more and better options for you there. So things like the bathroom stuff you just saw me place down in the other section there. Now you can go ahead and add these in and what that will do is the higher comfort level you have, the longer rested buff you will get. 
and that is going to be really crucial for when you're going out and exploring because having a big amount of rested buff as you can see my comfort level is 37 in the top left there and that gives me 42 minutes of rested buff which is a huge amount of time and this is the best way to increase your stamina in the game as if we go into the character here you can see it says increase stamina maximum and regeneration so this is a really really crucial part of the game that you definitely want to get ahead on now another really important thing you want to do is go ahead and craft these planters as early as possible these seed beds what you want to do with these is go ahead and throw in plants that you find with some water so for example chamomile which is a really really good plant you want to get lots of get this in there with some water you can browse the recipes down here and select the ones that you want to make these will make seedlings so you can see here one chamomile and one water will produce you five seedlings so then you can go ahead and replant these near your base in order to grow lots of them some will require farm soil which obviously you get from the farming merchant and some will require bone meal which you can make in the grinder obviously as you progress through the game these will require additional resources to make but this is certainly worth it and what you can go ahead and do is make a little area to plant these things in and that way you can have unlimited amounts of flax chamomile indigo plants and all of the other stuff that you need primarily i found flax very very useful because obviously this is needed in order to make linen now initially the only thing you can make linen with is this hand spindle over here. This costs two flax per linen but you can eventually get an upgraded version of the spindle which can do things for one linen. So as soon as you unlock that make sure you transfer over and stop using the hand spindle. Now for some players including myself up until today I couldn't actually make the rake. So if you are able to make the rake do that as soon as possible. Sometimes when you log off after unlocking this it's then locked out. Mine has randomly come back today. Now this was a known bug on the discord so they may well have fixed this now. So if they have, that's great. But if not, make this as soon as you possibly can, because this is going to make it easier to flatten out the land for you, especially when you're wanting to do things like plant your crops. If you have got a bugged session where you can't actually build the rake for a certain amount of time, however long that might be, what you can actually do is mine into the ground and then go ahead and pull out the building hammer. If you go down to the bottom option here, which is terrain and go across to this rock two meter, you can actually press control and scroll wheel and go down to either limestone, dirt, stone, whatever you want the material to be i've obviously been using dirt so i just mine down where it's rocky and then build it back up with dirt and you can actually make a flat surface that way in order to plant your crops so that is a little workaround for the moment if the rake is not available for you if you do want to get your hands on some easy water as well right next to where you are asked to build your initial home if you have made a base there or if you've kept an altar there at long keep there is a well here you can simply go up to this press e and you'll be able to scoop up water now you can do this every two hours or whenever you restart your session or the server which we'll move on to in a further tip in just a moment's time. Now a lot of the areas in the game are destructible so if you want to get into somewhere, if you wanted to get into this wall for example, if you just pull out the pickaxe you are able to eventually mine through this area. It might take a few swings in order to do so but you can actually mine that wall down and then as you can see you, if there was a hole at the other side you would be able to jump through that. Now another thing you can also do is use these explosive powder balls if you want to get through a location. They can also blow up the walls and things like that so that you can easily just jump through those areas and this is particularly useful when it asks you to build a lock pick if you don't have the metal scraps on you or you've got to bring them with you then you can just use your pickaxe or some of the explosive bombs in order to get around certain areas of the game and make things a little bit easier for you. Now one thing to note on lock picks that is really really crucially important and I realised this a little bit too late on in the game is that you really want to be crafting these through your blacksmith. If you go ahead and click them here you can see that it is one metal scrap per lockpick here whereas if you go ahead and press v in the character menu and go down to lockpicks you can see it's going to be costing you double metal scraps whilst that is only two you can get two for the price of one going through the blacksmith so as soon as you've unlocked him make sure you make all of your lockpicks through him where possible as that is going to save you a lot of resources and following on from that as well, make sure you're doing these NPC quest lines. You'll see them in the quest log. These are going to actually, for example, this quest is asking me to get a tanning station on this server. So once I've unlocked that, that's going to then unlock me some new crafting recipes and that's another element of progression so whenever you're feeling stuck or feeling like you haven't got something new to do like i said at the beginning make sure you craft everything you've currently unlocked if you still haven't got anything new and you need upgrades head over to these quests get them done and unlock the next stage of your progression now one thing you can do with torches if you are in a particularly dark area and for example you've got mobs to fight or you want to do some mining or collecting etc you can throw the torch down by holding e and that means you can then go about your business collecting or gathering or fighting while that lights up the area now that's really helpful for the initial part of the game, but as soon as you unlock the ability to either find or craft 
these right here, these Wisp of Lights. These are really good because they have a five minute duration and you are going to be able to get a light that basically follows you around and it is a very bright light so it lights up the areas brightly for you so you can see exactly what you need to be doing. Now these are available to craft at a certain point in the game from the Alchemist. You can see here right at the top they are Wisp of Lights. They do require Bug Dust, Glow Dust and Resin but if you've got those materials you can craft these and these are definitely worth taking with you when you go in exploring. Now another thing you want to do in the game is always grab these ancient spires whenever you do see them so there's one down here in the low meadows there's another one up here in the revelwood fast travel and of course the one near the beginning of the game at the springlands as well as a few others these are going to be great locations because you're able to fast travel back to these whenever you are not in the shroud and usually they are very very high up so you can actually fly from these with your glider and access different points and get further than you would do by just simply running so these can be great locations as well as being good landmarks for getting to new areas and often indicate the start of a new zone so make sure you're smashing all of the vases and barrels on your way up to the top of the spire so that you can get some of that new areas loot as well now through the carpenter at some point you will unlock the magic storage chests which you will need to craft medium chests combine those with shroud cores and goo in order to get yourself magic chests now these are really really good because it says the items stored here can be used for crafting purposes anywhere in the base so what we've done is created a little mini wall of magic chests here where we've basically put in every resource that we need for crafting out into these five chests and then if you go to any of the crafting stations so for example the workbench here you can craft anything you want so long as it is in those magic chests this is going to save you a lot of time going backwards and forwards trying to gather the materials that you need for certain crafting or for certain upgrades whereas once you've unlocked these you can just shove everything into them and craft directly from them one thing to note specifically helpful with chests is if you go into these chests and you press shift and r that will deposit the stacks of everything you've got of a similar nature so for example if we go into this chest here if i've got any wood logs if i've got any red mushrooms or if i've got any fossilized bone or any of the other things that are in here if i press shift r as you can see because i had copper all there it's put the rest of the copper in and so that's going to be a really good way to quickly fill up the chests and not have overlapping stacks in different chests. Like I mentioned earlier, for the crafting stuff, goo is required to make the magic chests. That is unlocked by crafting bug dust, so make sure you craft a bug dust as soon as you can. Obviously then to get the goo you need bug dust, shroud, liquid and dirt. All fairly self-explanatory, you get this from the mushrooms and the plants in the shroud. Dirt from hitting the ground and bug dust you make from the critter parts that you get here. So this is fairly easy to get, it's just going to require you to unlock the recipe. Like I said at the beginning, I went way too long without doing this. Now, one thing that you might be looking for, particularly in this game, is loot, whether that be from one of the POIs. You know, you go into one of these new locations and you found a load of chests in one of these outposts, for example, or one of these caves, or, for example, a sun temple. All of these are good locations to get loot as well as the spires and some of the other places around the map like the farms what you need to do in order for the chests or the loot in that area to respawn is leave the chunk area for more than two hours to wait for it to respawn but if anybody goes back into that chunk within the two hours the timer does reset they have addressed this on the discord and obviously with it being an early access game there is things that they want to change this is something they have addressed and said they want to change but they haven't done so yet so the options currently are stay very far away from that area Area for two hours or you can restart your game if you're playing in solo or the server if you are playing multiplayer if you want to get that loot before the timer is up now obviously this is a little bit of a weird tactic some people might not like restarting the game in order to refresh the loot system but it is a workaround for the time being until they add a more fluid system for loot respawns now if you are traveling around a certain area and there isn't a spire or fast travel point nearby one really good thing to do is drop your flame altars in locations that you're either going to want to return to or in an area that's in the middle of a lot of different things that hasn't got a fast travel nearby as you can see on the map here i have placed a few of these around another option you can do with these is if you are adventuring and you need to go home to repair you can either place one of these down and teleport back to base and then come back to it or you can place one down and create a workbench nearby sometimes it is just easier to teleport back to your main base though because you can also drop off items you can then go back to these and you can go up to any of the flame altars. Obviously, this is my main base, so I'm not going to do it now, but you can click extinguish flame 
and that will then give you this altar slot free. If you do want to check how many current flame altar slots you have available, open up the map and look to the top left hand side here. It tells you how many you have active and how many more therefore you can build. One quick final tip then is that when you get new weapons in the game it is definitely worth upgrading these weapons. A lot of the time it will increase the damage and give you some perks that make this weapon better. Now it may seem like a lot of runes at the current point but you will get a lot of weapons that you can just salvage that you're either not going to use or they're less good than the ones you currently have equipped. So you're going to be able to make these runes back very very quickly and making the most out of the weapon you are currently using is definitely worthwhile. For example this Looper's Scalper you can see here it does 43 damage. It comes with Brutal once I've upgraded it which gives me an increased critical hit damage by 20%. Vicious which increases the backstab damage by 20% and then plus 8 cutting damage and plus 8 poison damage. This is a really good weapon but when I first got it it was at a lot less damage than it is now. However after the upgrading it makes it much better and is a weapon that I'm now going to use for at least a few more levels so this is really really good and I would definitely make sure that you always upgrade your current weapon with the runes that you have available to make the most out of it. To add with this if you are a main weapon melee player like myself obviously make sure you have a shield equipped you can get these invisible shields which are very very cool but always bring with you a ranged weapon because a lot of the mobs in the game will be easier to take down with a ranged weapon as well as some of the puzzles will require a ranged weapon in order to hit the buttons. My personal preference is a wand as this does not require any ammo so it's just literally pick it up and shoot and you can also use the shield with this to block damage should the enemies get a bit close. So this is my personal preference, but do make sure if you play in melee, you always bring a ranged weapon with you. Other than that, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you found it useful. If there's any other tips for progression that you think I've missed, make sure you drop them down below in the comments. If you have enjoyed the video and you found it useful, make sure you drop me a like down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you do want to see some more Enshrouded videos. They're going to be coming here very, very shortly. Other than that, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Take care and peace.